Welcome. My name is Vincent Simono. I'm Technical Marketing Manager at SFM, and I'm here with John, our Technical Application Specialist. And uh, we're here to talk about none other than the EAW AC6. So tell us a little bit about what we have here. Currently, we have two AC6s flown here. This is one of uh, the family of adaptive products from EAW, Ana Ananya. It works alongside the EAW's resolution software. The single enclosure consists of six six-inch drivers and 30 uh, one-inch dome high-frequency tweeters. And each one has a channel of amplifier and DSP in order to produce the adaptive results. The enclosure itself is comprised of three modules, so uh, two six-inch drivers and 10 high-frequency drivers okay. for each module. The uh, modules are paralleled in terms of power from the power supply, so if there's failure in one module, the other two modules will still function. Also, serviceability. The uh, modules can be replaced from the front of the unit, so if the uh, system is permanently installed, there's no reason to have to take it down to service, service modules. As far as uh, input, you have analog input. You have Dante uh, primary and secondary. You also have AES-EDU. There's connections at the uh, top of the enclosure and at the bottom, so you can link from one, one enclosure to the other. EAW provides those links. They're very, very discreet, so you don't really see much wiring behind the cabinet, which is very nice for aesthetics. Its horizontal coverage is 120 degrees. Its vertical coverage is adaptive. Within the resolution software, surfaces can be put in place based on the room. The adaptive will utilize the components within whatever the size of the array is to cover the requested surfaces equally in SPL and coverage. And just to be clear, adaptive is something specific from EAW? EAW, yes. It's not beam steering. Okay. So this is their own, this is their own technology. There are a few accessories that are available. Uh, there is actually a, a speaker mount that's available. You can get a sub-attachment so that they can be secured to the subwoofers for SBX and SRX 18F, probably some more as well. It has a stinger which is attached to the fly points on the back of the AC6 and that will allow you, along with the Mohawk, to be able to fly the enclosures. There are connecting plates that are available to lock the uh, columns together and you also have two wall mounts. One is uh, basically a fixed mount. The other one will allow you to pivot mm -hmm. the enclosure. The big point on this is the Mohawk and the Stinger are two separate accessories. Yes, when you're, uh, when you're purchasing, uh, be sure to make sure that in your order you purchase the Mohawk, the Stinger, and, and be very, uh, well, we, we can take care of, we'll take care of that for you, but uh, okay. you know, just, just understand that. Now, the AC6, we look at it and it's, it's nice, but what sets it apart? There is, there is a few things that definitely set the AC6 apart that may be bypassed or people don't necessarily think about. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, there are a number of column speakers on the market, different ones, beam steering. Some of them are basically meant for uh, public address use, speech intelligibility, uh, train stations, uh, hospitals. They're not necessarily musical, so they have a, a single application. The AC6 is musical, and the, the important thing to note is, is that you look at the, the column size, you're really skeptical about performance, but in my experience using other, if you want to call them steerable arrays, uh, this has the horsepower. So this takes it up above just being uh, a musical speaker doing, you know, a small production. It has the horsepower to do uh, much larger events. So, and that's that's interesting because it's not just based on speech intelligibility. If you were to use this in a corporate setting, uh, the fact that, you know, uh, we know that, you know, in the morning, uh, chairs are set up, people are seated, so a setting can be set in the system so that it's covering, optimizing that, that seating area. 
but then at lunch break things are changed over and the arrangements are all changed so there's no need to change the system or go to a secondary deployment of another system just recall a setting and have it cover the new area that's fantastic yeah actually the interesting thing with a, a recent firmware update is that with ac6 you don't necessarily need to have a resolution and a computer with you you can actually set up via the the display on the back of the box oh. the dimensions required for coverage wow so it, it's not uh, well i have to sit down and do all this in resolution um, you know you can actually tell it you know my, my distance is you know x and and so it, you you can do it that way so out of the box if you're really really stuck oh in yeah a, in a yes. temporary solution anyways yeah you can get it up and going and you know get something going. Yeah, I mean, you know, in, in a larger uh, larger setup, it's always nice to have, uh, you know, you're, you're, you have monitoring along with, uh, you know, in resolution, there's uh, e uh, EQ filters available, there's a lot of information that's available in the software. So just to say that somebody uh, setting up, for instance, a column per side and wants to get the you know, obviously you, you're going to be using adaptive. That's the whole purpose of it. Exactly. You can do it from the, from the enclosure. That's impressive. Yeah. One thing that really struck me is um, the feature where, let's say you have a stack, one stack is not working. Yeah, in the AC6, but Anya and, and Anya, if there's any issues with components, the system can be set into heal mode. So it'll compensate for the component, component failure. So it'll still opti optimize the area with whatever components are available. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You never want to get stuck uh, during a production, whether portable or not. And, uh, well, the, the, the reality is, is in a conventional line array system, you lose that element, uh, whether an amplifier failure or whatever. Within the design, that element, because of the, the, the tight vertical coverage, was covering a certain section of the audience that it is no longer covering. Yeah. And usually with line arrays, when you're out of the field, you're out of the field. Yeah. So when you lose when you lose components in a in a, a tightly vertically controlled uh, coverage, it's it's uh, doesn't make for a great experience. No, it, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. This definitely is a bit of a sleeper in terms of power, right? In terms of distance. Looking, looking at it, it would appear that the way. Lines, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, like I said, the, I was excited to have the opportunity to experience this based on my experiences with other, other manufacturers. So a lot of them sounded really good and uh, able to do quite a bit with them, but they just, they just hit that limit. This has the extra horsepower to allow you to surpass that limit. So it, it's not... Um, Going to 11, let's say? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pull the final tab. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's a lot of, you know, column speakers out there that, you know, but a lot of them just don't have the power. So they're limited to either uh, you know, speech intelligibility, uh, background music, but not very musical, and that type of thing. And that's not the type of stuff that you can necessarily read in a spec sheet and stuff like that. And just looking at it, like you said before, it may give a different no, I, perception. The, you know, what's in, what's in a spec sheet and, and how the systems actually perform, you know, there's a reason why, uh, and I, my background is in production, there's a reason why you're flown out to the factory and there's an actual demo of the product because products take up the same same physical space but they don't perform the same yeah so uh, you know looking at a spec sheet you know 20k to 65 or you know or the actual uh, the summing of the drivers to be able to project a certain uh, distance that you require you know eight boxes of one brand of the same size and eight boxes of another brand they're two different things yeah. 
So that's why you need to listen to it. From there, it just tells the whole truth. Yeah. So that's, again, that's my opinion. Yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> the thing is too is, is that you need to know what the, what the performance value is because in my case, I'm having somebody's, somebody else's uh, ink being put on a, on a piece of paper. So I better be 100% sure that I'm confident that the product is gonna work for the project or the company or whatever, whatever it be. And that's a real world listening experience. This system too, you know, you get people in, you can show them how easy it is to fly, you know, bring the motor down, pull the pins, push the box off. All the rigging hardware, the stinger stay, can stay on the back. So whatever you wish to build in terms of uh, transportation, uh, in terms of road case or whatever you want, I mean, that's, that's totally up to you. The thing is, is with the, the adaptive stuff, the uh, Anna and Enya, the deployment is quick. So, you know, when you're looking at that, and I've experienced as well, I've had the, the pleasure of working with Enya, and so the amount of time for, for, uh, for an NHL hockey arena to take down the PA system versus a, a, you know, a conventional JRA, it's incredible, the amount of time. Um, I believe the last time the production saved like $20,000 in fees because the stuff was out quick. Oh. So there's a, a great advantage to this type of system because there's no curvature to it. That's right. The other thing too is if you want to take Anna, for instance, on an outdoor stage, usually on the, on the mobile stages, the wings are where the monitor world is and guitar world, which are tented. So in most cases, the J array is sitting on top of the tent, whereas with, you know, Anna, you can simply bring it down right in front. If you uh, uh, allocate, you know, it doesn't take up that much space. Yeah, yeah. So if there are any issues with that J-Array, oh, you have a tent, monitor consoles, oh, uh, wireless, everything for monitor world, or, or opposite guitar world. So wow. there, there are quite, quite a few advantages. Yeah. So they've really thought of a lot of stuff in terms of stackability, redundancy, as well as adapting to a lot of different environments, whether fix or portable. Yeah. Thank you so much for all that insight, John. Uh, it's really, really impressive. And again, a bit of a sleeper column speaker. Um, you know, typically we think of column speakers, we don't think of, you know, such a robust and fully, I guess, a fully featured, I don't know if that's the right term, fully featured column speaker where, again, um, just in terms of application. install application, yep. horsepower, full range versus, you know, concentrated in speech. Um, and just them thinking about uh, a lot of the integrator or production where, you know, everything has redundancies or, you know, just everything is well thought out. So again, uh, thank you for sharing uh, your thoughts on this, John. Really appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, the EAW AC6.